The Shira Nui and Luard Stride Deck sets have finally come to English and they're taking the meta by storm. So today we're going to be unboxing the Stride Deck sets for both Shira Nui and Luard. And we're going to kind of go into what makes these decks so good. This unboxing was also sponsored by 50 Cards. So thank you to 50 Cards for always supporting the channel and for providing us with the deck sets. So if you haven't heard of 50 Cards, it's an online shop where you can pick up Vanguard and Shadowverse bundles, singles, playmats, sleeves, everything you need for card games in general. So be sure to check out 50 Cards. They got the best deals on the market and you can get 5% off when you use code Nexus at checkout as well. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and open up these deck sets. All right, we got our stride deck sets right here. We got Shiranui set nine and Luard set 10. This is exactly 50 cards. So that includes the ride deck. So this is before the new rules. Look at that. It comes with some extra cards right there. So you got your four additional cards that you can just kind of throw into the main deck. That way you still have your 54 card deck and it comes with your crest and your G units. So the same goes with the the Ward Stride deck set, so it comes with everything you need for that. It just comes with sleeves and a storage box as well. So uh, unlike the premium versions, these don't come with a deck box or a play mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go in order, starting with set nine, which is the sheer Nui one, and we'll go with that. So I actually do have my box cutter this time instead of my keys. So we're gonna get some nice, hopefully good creases. That looks like a good gap to start with. Go there with the lip of the box. All right, so that's the box. This is gonna slide out with the little cover. Nice. And let's take a look at the box. So we got the full art Shirinuri Obero, the uh, Nubatama symbol. That's nice with the little, the white and the symbol. Dragon Empire representing the nation. Very simple, clean box. Uh, it's very similar to the uh, deck sets we got for Graham Grace and Orphis and the other one whose name I forget, Favernil. All right, so going right into this, we do see the sleeves on top. They look a little bent, but that's just kind of the, the packaging of the box itself. I'm sure once you put some cards in there, they'll even all, they'll all a little even out in a bit. And then we got the deck as well. This is the main deck, sleeves. See if we got anything else in here. I'm pretty sure this is all just space. Yep, and it's just storage. So this is pretty much just gonna be storing kind of like those uh, traditional Vanguard boxes, the plastic ones, the little foldy ones. You could fit about two of those in here. Like regular, uh, like Ultra Pro deck boxes, you could probably fit extras. But just to give an example, got my old Gurgit deck here from uh, Stride Era. So kind of kind of on par with what we're going with with the theme today. So you can, you can kind of see you can fit two of these in there, even sideways, maybe you can fit two and a little bit of room on the side for another box. Unfortunately, these do not come with deck boxes, the premium version does, uh, but this is still nice to have. The sleeves is a nice addition. So I'm gonna put the storage box on the side so we can go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna do a little zoom, get in there. That seems pretty good. Open this up. I'm gonna slide the little pat plastic off. See, so got our foiled version of Shiranui, and these are gonna be our common versions. So we should be getting four of these. And then comes with the ride deck as well. We got a foiled grade two, which is Genkai, our foiled grade one for the ride deck, which is Shizu, and our Madoi, our starter, a little foiled Dragon Empire starter. That looks lovely. And then we go into the rest of the main deck. So I believe for the rest of the main deck contents, it's similar where one card is foiled, the rest are common. So that's pretty much for the rest of the deck. So uh, except for the triggers, the triggers I believe stay common. Yep, including the OT. So we're just gonna go in order real quick with the main deck. It did come with the OG. Stealth Dragon Shirinui is a retrain, except it only has a rearguard skill. It's still a decent card. It's GB2 when it when a dominating unit attacks, uh, that gets 10K. And when you ditch it for stride, um, you can draw a card. So we do get three copies of that. We got two, or it looks like four copies of Sekai, uh, which is when your Vanguard attacks. If a unit was dominated this turn, you basically Soul Blast, restand this unit. If you have two more face-up cards, this gets an additional 10K. So we do get four copies of that. Four Eye, which is similar. It gets 5K each time, but dominant units attack. And when your Vanguard attacks, if a uh, unit was dominated, and it was a Ted attack this turn. You can solve us one to stand this unit. So it's another attacker, which is really cool for grade twos. So we get 
full play set of that as well. We got our stealth PGs, which is really cool because in standard we have a bunch of stuff for the stealth cards where you can filter through your deck, look for stealth cards, add them to your hand. So now we have a stealth PG, which means you can add PGs from your deck to your hand, which is nice. So we do get four copies of the basic PG and well, they're not the basic, basic one. These are the ones where if you have one or less in hand, you don't have to discard. So that's nice that we can get an updated version of that. And it's for the Nubatama clan as well. So these are specific to Nubatama. Then Katari Gitsune. This is the stride fodder uh, for OG Siranui. So when it's paying the cost for stride, this counts as a group three. And when it's in your hand, you can, uh, if you have an Obero crest, you can search your deck for a demon stealth dragon Shiranui, which I believe that's only the Obero has the uh, demon stealth dragon in its name. So you can only search the Obero off this, but you can at least add it to your hand. So we do get a play set of that, I believe. Yep. And then we got our Zanki, it gets 5k every time a dominated unit's attack hit. Um, and then when this unit attack hits, you can soul charge one. So this one, you're probably gonna end up switching out for something else, but we do get a play set of that as well. Uh, we do have Tenray, which is when it's placed on rear, if you have an Oberil Crest, you can draw a card when you counter blast. And when the attack by a dominated unit hits, you can bounce this back to your hand. So more hand, doesn't hurt. Let's see, we get four copies of that and then we get into our triggers. So for triggers, we do get the Drag Veda OT, which is really, really nice. Um, and then for the trigger lineup, we get our uh, pretty much vanilla lineup. So we get eight crit, three draw, four fronts uh, and four heals. These are all also featuring like the stealth artwork, which is really cool. So it's on brand with the, uh, the theme of the deck, which I really love. And then we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into the G units. So the main G unit for the deck is Shiranui Mukuro. Uh, it has Dominate, which is you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards, dominate it, and it attacks your opponent's vanguard. And then at the end of that battle, you stand and dominate all of your opponent's vanguards and they attack your opponent's rear guard. So you get drive checks off of that as well because you are using your opponent's vanguard to attack so then you can perform drive checks. So you get a little twin drive off of that which is nice. So five drive checks is pretty good. Uh, and then of course, um, it's an act ability. So this is all happening during the main phase, which is traditional for Dominate. We do get full foiled versions. Oh, and we do get a shiny version of Mukuro, a one of, which is nice. So we do get four of those. And then we get Magun Tembo. Magun Tembo has Dominate as well, act ability, similar to all Dominate for the most part. You choose a G unit, turn it face up, Choose one of your opponent's rear guards, you dominate it, it attacks one of your opponent's other units, and then you retire the dominated unit at the end of the battle. So very straightforward. It's just an extra attack, but it procs off all your dominate abilities. So we do get four of these, and then the, the shiny version of it as well, which looks really, really pretty. And then we get our Obero Crest. So this is what you get after you ride your grade one, uh, and it has the following ability. You can perform stride, uh, and you cannot ride in a, anything else that's not a, Shir, a demon stealth dragon Shiranui, so it's only Obero. The original power of your grade three cards with Shiranui become 13. During your turn, if you have a grade three or greater uh, Shiranui, all of your front row units get 5K for each face of card in your G zone. So it's very similar to all the other stride deck sets. And the final ability is during your turn, your opponent's units placed by your card's ability this turn lose all their continuous and auto abilities and they get an additional 5K. So all the dominated units that are attacking have an additional 5K power, making them a little bit harder for your opponent to guard, which is nice. It seems pretty fair for standard, but this deck is really, really aggressive with the multi-attacking. So that's where the uh, the power comes into play, especially with Mukuro. This thing is uh, this thing's kind of a beast when you're able to get off all those extra drive checks, which is nice. Um, but that is it for the main deck contents. It does come with these extra cards, so you are able to play with the 54 card deck. You would just have to add in your extra Genkai's as rear guards and your fourth copy of Shiranui. Uh, Genkai is a really decent rear guard skill. It's when a unit is dominated, when a dominated unit attacks, sorry, you cannot blast one, the attacking unit gets 10K and this gets boost. So this is what helps increase the power of dominated units, but it does cost a counter blast. The deck does get a little counter blast heavy. So some people have dropped Genkai completely for other stealth cards. Um, which is understandable, but if you're just kind of playing with the deck as is, this deck is actually like competitively viable, ready to off, go off the bat. Um, so there's very minor adjustments you would need to make if you wanted to make this like the best, most optimal Shiranui build. 
but by itself, this is still a really good deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get all this stuff back together real quick so that we can go ahead and open up the Luard Stride deck set. All right, it is Luard time. So let's go ahead, pop this baby open, get into the lip. Good clean opening, slide the slidey part out, and there's the box. So similar to the other one, it's gonna come with our main deck and our sleeves. Nicely packaged there for us. These are actually, they're both really nice sleeves. I like that they're using the new artwork for Shir, uh, Shir Nui and Luard. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. A little storage box as per usual. And we're gonna put that to the side so that we can open up, oops, put the sleeves in there. Put this to the side so that we can open up the Luard deck. A little zoom in there. Trash, slide the plastic off, trash, and there's Luard. So similar to the other one, we should get a full playset. So we do have our Drag Harlowar, which similar to Obro is the OG one from G era. So we do get a playset of that. And then for the right deck, we got Leofail, which um, when you, has the drop zone ability where when you stride or when your Grateful Lord is placed onto the Vanguard circle, you can discard a card, call this to rear. So, you know, if you soul blast it out, at least you get a little beat stick. But when it's also wrote upon, you can soul blast one and draw a card. So that's really helpful because you want to get grade ones in your drop zone anyway for the ritual ability. So this is pretty decent. Knees gets your crest. And look at Root. Look at him go. Nice and foiled. Very pretty. And then we got a Solemn Clout. And we do get a, uh, three copies of that, but there's the uh, extra fourth copy in the back. So you can have your 54 card deck. More Festa Retrain has the ritual ability where this counts as a grade one in the drop zone. When this attacks, if you have uh, Drag Hard Lord Crest, this gets 5k. If your G zone has two or more face up cards, you counter blast. Search for one card with the ritual ability, different from this unit, call to rear. So multi attacking. And we do get a play set of that. We get our Ezra's PG. These are Shadow Paladin PGs, which means they are searchable with uh, Dion Ruid, that one Keter Sanctuary card that lets you. Uh, add a card from drop that's similar to your Vanguard Zane. So this is a Shadow Paladin PG, which is pretty cool. And these are the ones where if you have two, uh, one or less in hand, you don't have to discard, which is nice. So good for Ezra's making a Shadow Paladin great standard. Abyssal Owl is back. Abyssal Owl uh, is not a stride fodder because like with the other deck sets with Messiah, um, Obero and Chrono Jet, they all had their stride, but for Luard, it's Abyssal Owl. So it still lets you search for a grade three Luard. It doesn't help you pay the cost for stride. And that is because Luard's main skill lets you pay the cost of stride essentially for free. It's just, you gotta return normal units from your drop back into the deck. So you don't have to really pay the cost for stride. So instead, uh, what it also does is drop zone ritual three. At the end of your turn, if you're Vanguard with Luard in its name, if you have a Vanguard Luard in its name, you can bind two cards with the same name as this unit to counter charge. So the only issue is that obviously you're binding units, um, so you can't really profit off ritual. You're gonna be losing Abyssal Owls, but the counter charge is still nice. So I do believe we get a play set of Abyssal Owls. And then we have a new card, which is Semius. I believe this is a new card. It has a continuous ability. During your turn, if you have a Luard Crest, this gets 2K, so it's a 10K booster. GB1, when this unit is placed on rear, other than during the battle phase. If you have a Vanguard Luard, look at the top two cards of your deck. Choose up the one card from among them, call to rear guard. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. And if you call the card, you retire this unit. If you call the card, you retire the unit that was called by this effect, but you're most likely gonna retire it anyways. And those we get a play set of as well. Preservation Angel, uh, Ritual 3. This gets Intercept and 5K Shield. So that's actually just a decent grade one to have in your hand and also just a decent attacker. So I still think this is a pretty decent card to run and we get a full play set of that as well. And then we have Luminosity Wizard, Ritual 3, GB1. If this unit was placed on rear during this turn, it gets 10K. That's really big. Uh, and when this is retired from rear during your turn, if you have a Luard Crest, you can Soul Charge one and then choose one of your Vanguards and it gets 5K. The Soul Charge could come in handy. We're gonna get into the rest of the deck and see where we're Soul Blasting at, but the extra 10K when it's being called is, is nice because you search it out with Luard Stride Skill. And we get a play set of that. And then we get into our triggers. So put the G's on the side for a second. So we get our Armor to Noah, 
Um, our Martino is not the like ideal over trigger in my opinion. It's obviously going to be the blue OT, but this is still nice to have just because if you do have you know some grade three rear guards, having twin drive can be helpful. But rear guards performing drive drive checks is nice, but this is just the generic uh, over trigger triggers. We got uh, it should be the same lineup. It should be four crit, three draw. Yep, and then four front. These are the same artworks from the festival booster, which is nice and the four heel as well. Nothing crazy there, but at, you're pretty much gonna be doing um, like eight crit, four draw, I believe is what the, the lineup is gonna be for the, the main deck. But let's get into the fun stuff, which is the G zone. So we're looking at Drag Strider Luard, which is your finisher. So it does say that for the stride step, you have to discard a card with Luard in its name, and you can stride this card into your Vanguard circle. However, Luard's ritual ability lets you get around Drag Strider's cost because Luard states that when you put two normal units to bomb your deck, you can stride without having to pay the cost for stride. And since Drag Strider's, you know, stride step is, is a similar stride, you can just get around that cost completely. But if you, did, if you didn't have enough grade ones, you would have to discard Luard normally as you would. So the main ability is Ritual 7. So seven grade ones in the drop zone. When this unit attacks, if you have five or more units with the Ritual ability, Till the end of that battle, this gets 10k in a crit. Then you can retire two rear guards, discard a grade through the Luard in its name from your hand, and it gets an additional drive check, and your opponent cannot call grade one or greater cards to the Guardian Circle, meaning they cannot use perfect guards for this attack. They can still use the Elementaria and put it in the, the order zone, um, but for the most part, they can't use PGs or anything else. So the extra 10k, a crit, a drive, so four drive checks, your, you know, the goal is like crit, crit game, I win. <laughs> Uh, you do get a playset of that, and we do get our shiny version of Drag Strider. Wow, look how pretty that is. That is nice. And then the other G unit is our OG Drag Driver Luard. So similar, stride step, discard a grade three, but obviously you're gonna get around that with Luard's ritual ability. So this card's ritual ability is when it attacks, you count plus one, turn a card in your G zone face up, search your deck for up to one unit card with the ritual ability called to rear. Super simple, only calls one thing, the OG Drag Driver let you call more things equal to the number of face-up Luard cards, but this is just a very simple on attack, call something from the deck. So there's nothing nothing crazy going on here, but uh, it still ramps up your G zone uh, and the crest does help the front row get more power. So, uh, you know, it's still cool. I like the way that uh, Drag Driver looks. And for our shiny version, look at that. Look how cool that looks. That's awesome. Okay, and finishing off, we do get our crest. So very similar to the Obero one. Uh, you can only ride a Luard. Uh, your Luard's base power becomes 13 and you get 5K. Your front row gets 5K for each face-up card in your G zone. And the auto ability is at the end of your turn, if you stride without paying cost this turn, you can choose up to one critical trigger from your drop, put it back to the bottom of your deck. So it's very similar to the Owl card, whose name I'm forgetting right now for Luard, where it would, uh, Belial Owl, that's the name. It's very similar to Belial Owl, where you would put it back into the deck at the end of your turn from the drop zone. So this is kind of mimicking that effect for Luard players. So there's a bit of a nostalgia with that as well, which is nice, uh, but it's very simple. Just putting your crit back in your deck so you don't deck out, I guess, but also kind of broken because of a uh, drag strider. Uh, we do get extras. We got our extra Leofails and our fourth Solemn Clout. So that way you can have a 54 card deck, which is very nice. And, you know, Leofell's not bad, but I, again, there's gonna be way better uh, grade twos you're gonna run. And I don't know if people are still running Solemn Clout in their main deck, but it's it's a decent beat stick. It's um, during your turn, it gets 10K, Ritual 3, but um, yeah, it's there. So kind of going into my overall thoughts on both of these decks, they're both really good. Uh, obviously, Obero is kind of the more competitive viable option because you stride, you dominate something with the stride skill, you dominate again with your G unit. Um, with Mukro, you're dominating up to three times. On top of the fact that all your rear guards are multi-attacking, there's just so many attacks that you are doing with Obero. It's kind of overwhelming to a certain extent, especially as the game keeps progressing and you keep striding, your front row just gets beefier and beefier and beefier. So I think Obero is definitely the more competitive deck. Uh, with that being said, Luard is also still a really good viable deck in the meta. I would say if like Obero is number one, like Luard could arguably be number two in the meta. So striding for free, which is nice. 
being able to pump up your front row after thinning out your deck and pulling out a bunch of grade ones with the stride skill, and then going into drag strider, quad drive, your opponent can't PG, you've been shoving crits back into your deck, so you kind of just want to like, you know, four drive checks, crit, 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 and your opponent just takes a bunch of damage uh, on top of the fact that your front row gets all that power from you striding consistently. So I would say that both of these decks are really good. Uh, I highly recommend investing in both of these if you guys haven't picked these up already. They're both a lot of fun and I can't wait to update these and show you guys the decks and, you know, show them off in some gameplay. Uh, be sure to check out 50 cards for the latest deals, discounts, they have specials that go on every now and then, so be sure to follow them on Twitter so you can get all those updates as well. And be sure to use code NEXUS when you check out to get 5% off. My name is Richard, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.